Hi, my name is Laura and today we want to show you how to make squash soup. This recipe is called silky squash soup and it's perfect for this time of year because we just harvested our squash and this year we have an incredible, incredible yield. We've got um, butternut squash, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, um, Hubbard squash. We've got lots of squashes here so we love squash recipes. So the first step to this recipe is to cut up an onion and um, everything we're gonna cut up, we don't need to be too precise about because we're actually gonna blend this recipe. So that's one of the benefits is um, it's a really fast recipe to make because there's, you don't have to be very precise about dicing or make small pieces. Um, it's just whatever you like. So we are looking for about one cup of onions and um, you don't need to cut the onions very small, but we do wanna get them started and saute them. And so I just like to do a rough job of cutting them up and then I'm gonna throw them in a pot. Turning that on to medium heat, I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in here and I'm gonna dump my onions in. So give these onions a quick stir and as the oil heats up, they'll just, we'll just wanna brown them a little bit until they're translucent. So while the onions are sauteing a little bit, we, we're gonna get some garlic. Now the main spices in this recipe is garlic and ginger. So we're going to be pretty generous with our garlic. Uh, this is fresh garlic and so it's um, quite strong. Still going to use um, three to four good sized cloves. So uh, we're just going to take a knife and, and, and squish the garlic and that makes it easier to peel. Otherwise you can do quite a bit of fighting um, to get the peel off the garlic. I like to cut off this little end here, just because it can be a bit hard. Once I've done that and gotten rid of the peel, I'm just going to roughly chop it up into little pieces. Once I've done that, I'll add it to the onions. And give this one more stir. I like to add carrots to my squash soup. It gives it a little bit of color and just sneaks a few more vegetables in there for the kids. So you can use two to three carrots. And these carrots are really nice and fresh. And, and when you get carrots that are fresh, you don't even actually have to peel them. So we'll cut the both ends off. Put that in the compost. And then we'll cut these up. The carrots take the longest to cook of anything, so uh, not too big a pieces for these. Once I've done that, I can then add this into the soup. <laughs> and give the pot one more stir. You can see the onions are starting to turn a little bit brown, and more importantly, they're getting a little translucent. These are small potatoes, so I'll use uh, five of them, and I do like to peel these. Having said that, it's up to you. If you want to put, keep the peel on, that works totally fine as well. This fresh produce is so beautiful. That's such a treat when you're working with stuff in season. I'm gonna cut these potatoes into four and that will be sufficient. The potatoes is the part of the soup that makes it silky. Um, if you can kind of think of the of mashed potatoes, but we're not, it's not the primary ingredient, the squash is the primary ingredient, so it just adds a little bit of texture and it actually makes, helps make the soup really creamy even though there's no dairy. Um, one thing about this recipe is it's gluten free, it's vegetarian, um, and there's no dairy in it either, so it works for all people. The potatoes into the pot they go, and we'll give it a stir. I'm just going to turn this pot down just a little bit on low so these veggies don't get too brown. So here I've got my beautiful butternut squash and um, squash can be difficult to cut into but butternut is actually one of the softest type which is why it's nice to make soup. I wonder if sometimes that's why it's the squash of choice for so many soups because it is easier to cut up. So I'll cut off the end. and I'll cut it in half. 
there's so much flesh in the squash there's not very many seeds at all and that's again a bonus to uh, butternut squash is that um, there's not there's really not very much waste at all stick that in the compost and you can just kind of scrape that out a little bit and then at this point um, I like to cut it in in strips about like so just because it's easiest to peel so I'll cut the whole squash like that and I like to I prefer to just do this with a regular um, curved knife and we'll peel this off once I've got half the squash peeled then I'm going to chop these up again you can just do a rough job of this and once we've got that done we will add that to our pot Again, give it a stir. We are going to put uh, one teaspoon of salt. Uh, one teaspoon of ground ginger. And if you really are a ginger lover, then you can definitely put fresh ginger into the soup. Um, and it's, you know, a little bit, you can be rough with it. Um, doesn't need to be a teaspoon exactly if you if you love ginger, add a little bit more. If you are a little hesitant towards ginger, then you can just even add a, a half a teaspoon and that's fine too. I'm gonna give that a little stir. We're gonna put a half a teaspoon of ground pepper in here. And then I'm gonna put a liter of vegetable broth. Now, I, again, I want this recipe to be vegetarian, so I'm using vegetable broth. Uh, chicken broth also works well. I will add also one cup of water uh, to the mix. This is a very thick soup, but one cup of water helps it just a little bit to thin it out a little bit. The vegetables are um, just mostly covered, which is perfect. We're gonna put the lid on. If you have a Dutch oven, that works the best because it keeps a lot of the moisture in. And we're gonna put it, set it to medium high and we're gonna let it cook for between 30 and 45 minutes. All right, so it's been 45 minutes. I did check the veggies at 30 minutes, but they weren't quite ready. Um, I like to check them with a fork. Um, the squash is definitely soft. The potatoes are good. And the carrots, like I said, they're the slowest ones to cook. These ones are good too. So if you can break through them easily with your, with your fork, you know that your, your hand blender is gonna work well. Now, if you don't have a hand blender, you can also use just a regular blender as well. But this, these hand blenders are just so useful, they save on dishes. We're going to blend it, and, and I just would advise you be very careful because this is hot, and you want to make sure that when you're blending it, you're not ever coming out of the blender while you have your blender running, because then you will spray hot soup everywhere. Now, depending on the size of the squash, is going to depend how thick the soup is, and we did use a bigger squash today so I think I'm going to add just a little bit more water into this I can see I'm not finished blending yet but I can see it's very very thick so we can easily do that and then you just need to taste it at the end to see if you need to adjust the salt and the pepper you can see that it's a very smooth very silky soup that is how you make silky squash soup